Hey folks, summer is taking its sweet time getting here, but when it finally does, you're gonna to wanna to be emotionally prepared to barbecue. This week, thanks to a sponsorship from the National Pork Board, I'm walking you through both indoor and outdoor iterations of a Carolinian classic, pulled pork. Let's get down to basics. All right, so the first thing we've got to do is make us a dry rub. I'm going to start with about a half a cup of brown sugar, add to that an equal part of white sugar, and a huge amount of paprika, maybe about a half a cup's worth. I need a little tiny whisk help to get it out of the jar. There we go. And if you're going with the indoor or sous vide version of this recipe, now is a good time to add some smoked paprika, maybe a tablespoon's worth, along with a tablespoon each of dry ground mustard, garlic powder, onion powder, a teaspoon or two of ground ginger, a tablespoon of dried oregano, and about a tablespoon each of kosher salt and freshly ground pepper. I'm not really measuring anything here because rubs are very forgiving. It's pretty much just a mixture of sugar and spice to make everything nice. Mix that together by hand to make sure that there are no chunks and insert into a shaker of some kind for easy meat distribution. Next up, we gotta start talking sauce. A classic from Eastern North Carolina is primarily made of vinegar, about a cup and a half of apple cider vinegar, the juice of half a lemon, between one teaspoon to one tablespoon of cayenne pepper, depending on how spicy you want it. Likewise, with a shot of hot sauce and salt and pepper to taste. Easy as that, no muss, no fuss, no cooking. Just give it a little tiny whiskin and dispense into a plastic squeeze bottle for easy distribution. And as with everything else in the world, give it a taste, see what it needs. Take a shot of it to try to show off to your unimpressed friends. But what about the thicker, tangier, tomato-based barbecue sauce that you're probably more acquainted with? For that, we turn to West North Carolina. First, we're gonna start with all the ketchup you have left in the house. For me, it's about one cup, followed by an equal part by volume of brown sugar, so about one cup, packed. The juice of half a lemon, three tablespoons, of butter, a few glugs of your favorite hot sauce, a few glugs of Worcestershire sauce, and about a quarter of a grated onion's worth of grated onion. I'm also going to toss a heaping tablespoon of our spice rub in there for a little flavorful kick, and about a half a cup of water to help with the evaporation during its 30-minute stint over medium-low heat on the stovetop until thick and viscous. Look at that viscosity. You just don't get that from the store-bought stuff. I mean, you do, but this just tastes better. Moving on, it's time to start handling the actual pork. For this application, we want a bone-in Boston butt, which is actually from the pig's shoulder, not its butt. We also want to trim a bit of the excess fat. Pulled pork is meant to be fatty, but we want to maintain as much of the dark brown crust or bark that forms on the outside of this butt as possible, and it's not as pleasant when it's mostly fat. Next up, we are liberally applying our spice rub, making sure that every nook, cranny, and surface is evenly coated in the flavorful dust. Now I'm going to start with the indoor version of this recipe, which involves cheating a little bit on the smoke. In addition to the smoked paprika that we added, to the spice rub, we're also going to sprinkle it all over with a little bit of liquid smoke. If you live in an apartment like me, this is really your only low fuss option. There are ways to imbue the pork with real smoke flavor, but we'll save that for another episode. The thing that is fussy about this recipe is that we're going to sous vide it using a technique developed by J. Kenji Lopez Alt. So we're placing this in our vacuum seal bag, vacuum sealing it, and preparing it for an 18 to 24 hour, 165 degree Fahrenheit bath. You'll see that I'm dipping my butt in the water first, weighing my butt down with a heavy ceramic bowl or plate and then wrapping the entire affair with plastic wrap. I'm then going to punch a hole in the plastic wrap to give my sous vide access to the butt. This is going to prevent evaporation, which is a real problem as I discovered when sous videing something for this long. Trust me, you do not want to wake up in the morning to discover that your lovingly prepared butt is clunking around in an empty bath. I'm going to cool it with the butt jokes because it's getting old and because 24 hours has passed and we're ready to put a crust on this thing. First, we're going to drain all the liquid from the bag, hang on to the stuff because because you can strain it and add it to your favorite simmering barbecue sauce for an extra porky kick. And then very carefully pat completely dry your deliciously tender pork shoulder before giving it a massive bonus dusting of our smoky spice rub and placing in a 300 degree Fahrenheit oven for about 60 to 90 minutes until it emerges triumphantly dark brown, crisp and intensely flavorful. Only thing left to do now is shred. Mine is coming apart very easy. I let it go a little bit too long, about 26 hours. If you want a firmer, chewier texture, only let it go for 18. Behold the porcine power before you before placing on a plain white or potato bun and saucing liberally with your sauce of choice. And that, my friends, is how you do barbecue with science. But what if we want to do it the old-fashioned way? For that, you either need a smoker or a friend with a smoker. The process begins very much the same by liberally and evenly coating in our barbecue spice rub. Then ideally you want to 
wrap in plastic wrap and chill overnight, but if you just don't have the time, into a 250 degree Fahrenheit smoker it goes. Heated with your choice of smoking wood, I'm going with hickory and apple wood, I just salivated saying that, and probing the pork to its thickest point with its fat cap facing upwards so it bastes the meat constantly in melting fat. I'm also going to flank the butt with aluminum foil trays of water, as the humidity early on in the cooking process will help encourage bark formation. And then we're shooting for an internal temperature of 195 to 205 degrees Fahrenheit, which could take anywhere from 6 to 12 hours, so now's a good time to run out and get a tiny whisk tattoo. And when you return, you should start seeing some serious bark formation. Unfortunately, we're running out of light out here, so I'm going to take this home and finish shooting in the lab. And as you can see, our pork shoulder now resembles a meteorite, or a meteorite. <laughs> Sorry been a really long day. And likewise, we are just going to remove the bones, shred it up, admire the nice pink smoke ring that we've achieved, and I'm going to serve this up with a very simple coleslaw. Just half a head of shredded cabbage, two to three tablespoons of white vinegar, a good shake of celery seed, and while this is not traditional in the Carolinas, I like to add a few tablespoons of mayo. And we do want to keep this simple because we don't want anything competing with our pork. Not that anything really could compete with this pork, I mean, look at it. So as you can see, pork shoulder or Boston butt is a versatile, inexpensive, and delicious way to dip your toes into the world of barbecue this summer. I want to say a big thank you to the National Pork Board for sponsoring this episode and for spreading the way, the truth, and the life to all those who don a halo of blue smoke.